Hello and welcome. Let's take a look at the big story that we are tracking for you right here on Weon. The year was 2008. Putin was sitting in his VIP box in Beijing's Bird's Nest Stadium, poker based for the lavish opening ceremony of the 2008 Beijing Olympics. The pageantry that he was viewing was world class. But why was the Russian leader distracted? It was because Moscow was at war with former Soviet Republic Georgia. Putin was distracted by real-time updates as the Russian air operations commenced on that very day. Fourteen years later, the Russian leader is in the same city. It is again another Olympics, another opening ceremony held in the same stadium with the same leader. But how distracted is Vladimir Putin this time? Now, the Winter Games are already controversial. It has been tainted by diplomatic boycotts and the authoritarian flexing of Beijing. But the tensions in Ukraine are completely overshadowing the Olympics. This time, Putin is joining Xi Jinping for the opening ceremony. The Chinese leader has spent billions to showcase its power and China's return to the global stage after the pandemic. So the last thing that Xi Jinping would want is a war distracting the world from his coveted games, which is why Xi Jinping looks like the person with the most influence on Putin's timetable. Currently, Russia and China are enjoying the best relations. The two have been strengthening ties on all fronts. They have had similar foreign policy approaches. Now, the leaders even share a great personal rapport. Since 2013, the two have met over 30 times, with Xi Jinping even calling Putin his best friend. So announcing an invasion in Europe may throw a wrench into this relationship. A recent Bloomberg report quoted an anonymous Beijing official saying that she may have even asked Putin to not invade during the games. China has denied all such reports, calling it sheer fiction. But even the U.S. intelligence suggested the same. Washington remains convinced that Putin is ready to use force against Ukraine by mid-February. This is because any military action during the Olympics could upset Xi Jinping. For now, Russia has very little incentive to antagonize China, especially at a time when it is facing off with the West. For Russia, China is its top trading partner, the key source of investment in its energy projects, and Moscow is also the biggest supplier of weapons to China and the second largest source of its oil imports. But no matter what Putin wants, the focus continues to remain on Ukraine. The entire world is talking about it, Russia and China are issuing joint statements asking NATO to stop expansion. The two leaders are trying to put up a united front and the West is deploying more and more troops. While Putin and China have been in the same situation once, this time it looks like the drumbeats of war are drowning Xi's Olympic dreams. Weon is covering the latest developments from the ground. We earlier spoke to Weon's executive editor, Polkishamo Padie, from Kiev. Listen in. This is a classic stalemate, and it only got worse for the West today with a meeting between Presidents Putin and Xi, because Russia has now officially enlisted the alliance and the support of the Chinese. That joint statement today was very, very clear and categorical in accusing the U.S. and its NATO allies of ratcheting up tensions and of threatening uh, the security of the Indo-Pacific, which they call the Asia-Pacific, of course. Uh, so uh, China is clearly and firmly in Russia's corner. Although just like the Americans won't commit troops to uh, the Ukrainians yet, China is not talking about actively being party to this conflict. Uh, having said that, uh, conversations between all sides are still very much on. As we speak today, uh, Turkish President Erdogan is in Kiev to hold talks with uh, his Ukrainian counterpart, uh, uh, President Zelensky. A few days back, uh, the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson was here. In the days ahead, we are going to see a meeting between Emmanuel Macron, the President of France, and Vladimir Putin, the President of Russia in Moscow, uh, followed by uh, a visit by German Chancellor Olaf Scholz to Moscow. So uh, diplomatic parley is very much on. Uh, uh, the attempt is
to find a solution through talks. But remember, talks have been on for weeks now, even between Washington and Moscow, and they haven't really delivered because, like I said, it's a classic stalemate. Russia has made some demands which, which the West is not ready to deliver on, which the West is not ready to consider. And uh, that bone of contention very much remains. So it's, it is going down to the wire. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.